guys, and welcome to another kit review. All right, so today, as you can see, we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya. It is in 140A scale, and it is Tamiya's Arado AR196A. Okay, so this kit is actually not Tamiya's. All right, this kit actually belongs to Italeri. All right, so the kit number for this one, Tamiya kit number for this one, is 37006 and this came out in 2010. In 2010, Italeri also released this kit and that kit number was 2675. So I'm not sure if you can see it down here, it says aircraft parts are product of Italeri. Okay, so the actual model is Italeri, but this does have Tamiya instructions and uh, a history sheet etc on it so obviously it was made in uh, cooperation with Italy all right so this is one of those quite I wouldn't say rare but it is sometimes especially out here in Australia very hard to uh, pick one of these up this one cost me around fifty dollars including postage I thought that was a pretty good bargain so normally when they turn up in Australia they're um a lot more expensive than that okay so let's have a look at the box art so this is actually a photo of an AR196 being launched from Bismarck okay so it has been rendered by Tamiya's artists but I have seen this photo and I'll actually see if I can find it Um, but yes, that is an exact, almost an exact copy of the uh, aircraft being launched by Bismarck. Okay, so there's your beautiful box art. Really nice. That would be an awesome diori diorama if you could actually build it. But that would cost you a fortune and take a long time. All right, so let's have a look at the rest of the box. On the sides, you'll see this one here. This is actually in French markings. It is by um, an Arado that was on the auxiliary cruiser Widder. It does say October 1941. By October 1941, Widder had been renamed and uh, was a repair ship in Norway. So this would be 1940. And yes, the Germans did use French markings. The Widder did operate in uh, the Atlantic. Okay. Over here, we have got... An Arado for Crete 1941. Okay, standard German camouflage. On the other side, we have the Arado, and this is from Bismarck 1940. Okay, so Bismarck had four of these, and when she went down, um, so did all the aircrew as well. On the sides, you'll see a silhouette painting of Prince Eugen and Bismarck and it does say here sold separately okay so they're not included in the box unfortunately okay so that's the box let's have a look inside so this came from a private seller and as you can see they actually haven't done anything with it so we have instructions history sheet and the decals and then we've got one bag of sprues, which is your floats. Okay. One bag of sprues, which is the rest of the aircraft. Your wings. Okay. Your fuselage. Pilots. All right. Clear parts all in one bag. So that's first indication it's not a Tamiya kit because Tamiya puts them all in separate bags, unlike Italeri. And that is what's in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions. Alrighty, so let's have a look at the instructions. So, here we have uh, one and two photos of the actual model, and again, it does say here, aircraft parts are product of Italy. Okay, so, as I said, this is a cooperation between Italy and uh, Tamiya. There's nothing unusual about that. Plenty of uh, model manufacturers do cooperate when they're issuing kits and what have you. Okay, so let's have a look. 
So standard Tamiya instructions, cautions, these are your paint callouts, which are all Tamiya paints, of course, recommended tools, and then straight into it. And no, there are no through layouts in this kit because this is a Tamiya instructions. So we start with the fairly comprehensive cockpit. Okay, so nicely done. Does appear to have a seat belts on the um, seats, and they are decals. Okay, so um, you can leave the pilots out if you want to. Then we carry on with the cockpit, and you do have two separate sides. So all of this will need to be painted first before you insert that into the fuselage, and then that gets inserted into the fuselage. And the exhaust pipes are going on the front. So it is purely one piece. Then we have the engine, as you can see. So you've got a three-piece engine cowling. All right. And the engine consists of two cylinder blocks. It does say here, remove these parts. So these are the just the molding braces for the actual cowling. That goes on the front of the aircraft with this part here which allows your propeller to spin. Then you get to paint call out for your pilot. Upper and lower wings going together. Wings go on the fuselage. Tail, okay. This had a one piece tail plane. All right, fairly straightforward on the Arado. You do have bits and pieces going on the bottom, which is just um, air coolers, etc. Then you have flaps, so you do have separate flaps, inboard flaps, okay? So you can put them down or up, depending on whether it's in flight or just sitting on the water or what you're doing with this one. Then we have the floats going together, so you do have two floats to build. Then you have the mounts for the floats, so at this stage here, you also have these which go on the front, so just be very careful when you put that together. I would leave this as one section before you and paint it separately because these floats will get into way of actually painting the aircraft itself. Then overleaf, you just attach the floats. More bracing to the bottom of the aircraft. And she's pretty much done as far as the aircraft is concerned, apart from a few other bits and pieces. And then we move on to the dolly okay so if this was a land-based arado okay you would use this transport movement dolly to move it in and out of the water okay so that's what that's for if it's land if it's based on an air uh, i was going to say aircraft carrier but a, um, a ship you won't have a dolly like this okay then we get on to propeller we would rear firing machine gun okay this is your center cockpit section and then overleaf you just mount the cockpit on you can have it open or closed depending on your preference here you see the Arado being placed on the what they call a dolly all right and then you have a choice you can mount bombs if you want to um the Arado's did use their bombs occasionally attacking submarines and what have you so that's a personal choice you can or leave them off if you want to not a problem and then we just get on to the painting okay so the first one here this is crete 1941 okay so this would probably be a land-based um aircraft then you have an arado from the bismarck okay Fairly straightforward, the paint schemes fairly standardized as far as um, German aircraft are concerned. Overleaf, you have here the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen. All right, again, standard German aircraft painting black green, dark green, white blue underneath. Then we have this one. And you'll notice that this one is in Japanese markings. It was not a Japanese Arado. 
it was operated by the Germans on the auxiliary cruiser Thor, okay, which operated in the Pacific around Malaya, now called Malaysia, back then it was called Malaya, around the 1941s. Thor was lost in a accident in uh, Yokohama Harbour, I believe, around about just a little bit later than that, okay. But the Germans did paint their aircraft with Japanese randals, okay, to disguise the fact that they were actually German. And overly, you have this one here, which is from the auxiliary cruiser Widow, which is painted in French markings. Again, to disguise the fact that this was actually a German ship. The auxiliary cruisers did use uh, false flags, okay, flags from other nationalities to get close to their victims, and then up came the German flags, and away they went. All right, so that's the instructions on how to put this together. The other sheet is, as it says here, part of their Tamiya's aircraft series. It is their history sheet. So it is in Japanese overall. Most of it is Japanese, but you do have English, German, and French, and it does give you a basic outline of where the parts were on this particular aircraft. You should note that the fuel tanks were actually in the floats. Okay, so that's really nice and handy. It is only a brief history, but it does give you an idea of where this aircraft actually operated and how it was operated. Okay, and that's the paperwork. So let's have a look at the decals. Okay, so you get the standard German crosses. Up the top here, you do have your pilot's seat belts. Okay. Other registrations and um, unit ID. You do have one for Crete, Bismarck, Prince Eugen. Okay. This one here is for the um, Widder Auxiliary Cruiser, which operated in the Pacific. And as you can see, these are actually French Naval Air Force roundels and insignia. So that doesn't surprise me in the least. And down here, you have your Japanese. Okay, so these Japanese markings were used on the aircraft from the uh, auxiliary cruiser Thor, which was lost in a um, accident in Yokohama Harbor. She was moored there. The Japanese didn't have enough fuel. Something happened when she was moored alongside a um, tanker. The tanker exploded and the Thor caught fire. She was complete right off. End of story for that one. As you can see though, these roundels are completely out of register. It looks to be, if you can see, I'm not sure you can see, Originally, they were printed way up here somewhere, and they've come along and reprinted over the top with another orange disc and missed the mark completely. These ones here are supposed to have white around them, and as you can tell, like that, the white is underneath the overprint red, or vice versa, I'm not sure which, but those Japanese roundels are completely useless so you'll have to have a dig in your spares box or get some aftermarket some afraid apart from that the rest of them look really nice okay yes it's french and japanese okay they were operated by the germans from german ships but if you're in the atlantic or the pacific and you see an aircraft fly over and you think oh that's a japanese aircraft that's a French aircraft. That disguises the fact that just over the horizon there is an auxiliary cruiser, probably flying a, f a false flag. Same, same colours. As it gets closer, you think, ah, it's a French ship. No worries. And then they drop the flags. Up goes the German pennants. And you're done for. Okay. These were commerce raiders. And they used every trick in the book including false funnels, 
and all sorts of false uh, superstructures to get as close as possible to the victims. You'll also note you do get a instrument decal as well. Okay, so apart from the terrible Japanese ones, these appear to be quite good. They are printed in Italy. Okay, so yes, and that is, by the way, the Italeri Arado kit number 2675. Okay, so that's the decals. Okay, a little bit disappointing. Um, in a second, we'll have a look at the sprues. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues. So the first brew we'll look at is the fuselage. Okay, and there were a couple of loose parts in the bags. There was the propeller and also the propeller pin. Okay, so they were loose in the bag. The bags were sealed, which is really good. I'm very happy with that. That means it's all here. All right, so actually let's have a look at the propeller first. So just move that out of the way so you can get a better view. So the detail is nice, but I can already see um, quite a lot of mold. Oops, sorry, that went out of focus, guys. Let's see if I get that in focus. That's better. There you go. Yep, there is a bit of cleanup. All right, so this is, as I keep saying, an Italeri kit. So you will have a fair bit of cleanup along the mold lines for this particular aircraft. Let's have a look at the fuselage. So that's, yes, that is a cable. All right. That's how they hoisted the aircraft back on board the ships with that cable. Okay. So that's the dolly. There is your cylinder head instruments. Quite nicely done. I do like those. There is your pilot's instruments. There is your three-piece cowling. That's part of the dolly. The other half of the aircraft. And I'll turn that around. So as you can see, there's a cable on that side too. Okay, these are just parts of the dolly, etc. So really nicely, that is your cockpit flooring. All right, so this is nicely done. Doesn't seem to be too much in the way of flash on these actual parts. Let's have a look on the other side. Though you won't see them. There's some mold marks, but that is the inside of your cockpit. All right, sorry right there get that back in focus there you have it there are some mold indents which will need to be fixed all right they're going to be they will probably show up this is quite a large clear area so they'll have to be filled all right so overall it's not too bad indeed some of the detail looks a bit soft but I think it will still paint up quite well. Okay, so that is your fuselage halves for the aircraft. So there isn't a great deal to this. There's only four sprues to the whole aircraft. Next we'll have a look at, this one is quite big, 
the wings were separate in the bag so we'll have a look at the wing detail so nice panel lines really nice panel lines on this and no molding problems that I can see a little bit of cleanup maybe around the edges but apart from that no that's really quite nice let's have a look at the rest of it so as you can see you've got your upper wings and your tail yeah and also the bracing struts and framework for the floats so again really nice really really nice panel line detail a uh, bit of clean up around the flaps okay they look a bit heavy but apart from that that is your machine gun which i think will need a bit of a clean up tail so i've read in places that um, this Italeri kit has slightly different, slightly wrong uh, tail, slightly wrong uh, wing angle, etc. etc. For the average modeler like me, will mean nothing. For the purist, yes, I'm sure they'll lose their mind trying to fix it. But you know what, guys? Overall, if you're looking for an Arado, 196 I can't fault this one so far I think this will come up to be a really nice kit Okay, and next we'll have a look at the floats. Now you do get two sprues, so I'll put one of those aside and we'll have a look at this one. Okay, so as you see, you've got two float sides. This is the top. The wheels are for the dolly, so no, you don't have to use the wheels. You won't be using those wheels on the aircraft itself. Just a few bits and pieces. This is the front of the float. Okay, so these are just fittings, etc., that go on the float arms. These are your bombs and spare ammunition cans for the MG. Okay, fairly basic, not much to this one. Really nice detail on the float top. Okay, so the float themselves had a 300 litre fuel tank okay and also uh, survivor kits emergency rations smoke dischargers all sorts of bits and pieces were stored in the floats kept the weight of the aircraft down much lower than it needed and um, added to the really nice handling for the aircraft from what i've read the um, pilots loved this aircraft because it handled really well in the air but also on the water. Okay, so that is the floats. Next is the clear parts, which is these. So they're fairly clear, although I've seen, where is it? There is a scratch on one of these, that I'll have to be fixed. But apart from that, they are nicely clear. I can't see a problem with the clear parts in this. Now, as I said, this is a large copic area. So, um, definitely be worthwhile detailing all the instruments and things inside, okay, so that you will actually be able to see them uh, once you've completed this model. 
So that's really nice. And the only other thing I've got to show you, and this is an obvious clue that it's a Tamiya Italeri um, cooperation. This one is stapled. The other bags were not stapled, they were just sealed. Okay. Tamiya always staples its bags and Italeri will seal them. So let's get these guys out of here and we'll have a look at the pilots. Okay, let's have a look at the pilots. There you have it. Fairly basic, fairly straightforward, and fairly simple. Bit of cleanup along the mole lines. Okay, these are Tamiya's uh, new parts for this kit because the original Italeri didn't have pilots in it. Okay, so yeah, not too bad. They're kind of mm hmm, but. Uh, your choice whether you use them or not all right and that guys is it as i said there's not much to it four four basic sprues plus the pilots and that's all there is to it okay and that is tamias stroke italeris arado AR196A, okay, 140A scale, came out in 2010, not a bad looking kit, um, definitely worth it if you can get it cheap like I did, okay, they do go for some interesting prices, um, how you would display this, probably if you weren't going to use this in a, a mini diorama on a water, then you definitely display it on the uh, on the dolly. Okay, and as usual, guys, that brings us to the end of this review. I hope you've got something from it. Thank you for your likes, comments, and um, subscribing. And as always, until next time, take it easy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.